Is today's Windows 10 build the one? Apple unveils new iPod touches, Netflix is killing it with subscribers, and more. It's Wednesday, July 15th, and this is Crunch Report. Well, put a fork in it. I'm left-handed. Windows 10 is done. Done not as in donezo, but as in ready for the world, having just dropped a new Windows 10 build for all its testers today, which is rumored to be its release to manufacturing, otherwise known as RTM status, with build number 10,240. Must be really fun to be an engineer over at Microsoft. The company will release Windows 10 to its testing community on July 29th, then to its volume partners, and then finally, the public at large. RTM builds are really just for equipment manufacturers who need the code ahead of time so they can load Windows onto new machines. Dell, that's a big OEM, will start selling Windows 10 PCs on the 29th, the day the code goes live. The new OS is designed to constantly update and act like a service rather than a piece of software as it has for so many years. Windows 10 is a free upgrade for a year for most PC users in order to get a lot of people using it and in turn, get more developer love. Reports of the iPod's death have been greatly exaggerated. Sure, the iPhone is the real hardware star these days, but the accessories and iPod category still made Apple $2.68 billion in revenue in the first quarter of this year. Today, Apple refreshed some new iPod models with new colors, a more powerful 64-bit A8 processor, a new 8-megapixel rear-facing camera with better hardware, and more emphasis on the iPod as a gaming and a photo device. New iPod touch models will still come in silver, space gray, and product red, but three new colors as well, blue, pink, and gold. The A8 processor also supports Metal, that's Apple's low-level framework that gives developers up to 10 times the speed for gaming, and an overall 6x jump in CPU. Battery life in the new iPod Touches is not changing, and besides the new colors, the iPod Shuffle and the Nano models aren't changing either. Touch models start at $199 for the 16 gigabyte model, 32 gigabytes for 249, 64 gigabytes for 299, and a new 128 gigabyte model at $399. At a press event in New York City this morning, Google announced a new feature called Purchases on Google, which really just lets people buy products directly via a buy button from mobile search ads. Those appear as promoted search results. It starts rolling out on the Chrome app for Android this month with iOS to follow in the coming months. Merchants will still handle the actual product fulfillment, but the pages will be hosted by Google. Google says the feature is designed to reduce friction in mobile purchases, and it wants to stay out of the merchant to consumer transaction. But it's still getting that data. The feature launches with a dozen or so retail partners over the next few weeks, then much more scale, those are Google's words, in the US by late 2015 or early next year. Netflix just announced its second quarter financial performance with revenue of $1.64 billion and earnings per share of six cents, along with a seven for one stock split, which put it pretty good. Netflix also gained almost 1 million new domestic subscribers and 2.4 million new international subscribers. The company finished its quarter with 65 million subscribers overall, 42 million of those are in the US and 23 million internationally. At this point, Netflix has almost doubled its subscriber growth from last year when it picked up 1.7 million new customers. The company's DVD business might seem a little antiquated these days, but still brought the company almost $78 million in profit in Q2. Netflix also continues to invest in original content, which puts its negative free cash flow at about $229 million in the second quarter, $2.4 billion in debt overall, which is not far from its $2.8 billion in cash. How about a trip around the social mulberry bush? I made that up. Let's start with Twitter, which is changing how it displays links in its iOS and its Android apps. URLs have been kind of kicked to the curb and replaced with a card-like format that takes up more space, showcases more, gives you more information of what's behind that link, and will remind many of you of how Facebook already does this. Speaking of Facebook, video is a crazy, fast-growing category on the network. We should know, with 4 billion daily video views on the site as of last quarter. But we can't just all watch every video that appears in our news feeds right when it appears, right? So the company is testing a watch later button for videos that you might not want to consume right now, but you'd like to come back to. 
This is on Facebook for desktop to start, and I'm obviously not one of the testers because I don't see it yet, but it competes directly with YouTube, which is the reigning champion in the video category, and already offers its own watch later feature for its videos. You might recall about a year ago, Facebook rolled out something called Save, which was an Instapaper clone to save links to articles and save places and save media into a folder that you could look at later. Watch later is a more aggressive video specific version of that. And that is the report for this Wednesday. I'm Sarah Lane. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. Thanks for being here. See you tomorrow.